can you see? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm shushing. No, it's okay. You can talk. <laughs> that is the idea of this. That is that is the idea. Yeah. But, um, How can I see what? So can you now see this on your channel at the same time? How does it all work? Karen? I'm I'm looking at it through Streamyard, but Streamyard is going onto my channel. I hope. Blows my mind. We've not got anyone here yet, so. Okay. How rude. <laughs> In fact, I think I can see if you look on. Well, that's what I'm now doing as well. I'm if you look at look at your. Uh, oh, I, assume, I assume you subscribed to me. Pardon. We've got eighteen watching apparently. Oh, I've got twenty four. It says it says now. So that's good. Oh, hello, people. It's all come through. Hello. I don't Sorry, know, just, just working out the technicalities of streaming live. <laughs> But you did your baking one, which was brill. Yeah, that was really, that worked out really that worked out well. That was good fun. I'm not sure it was it worked. I mean, I enjoyed the live. I don't know if it it worked well with us all baking and clattering around the kitchen and not. <laughs> you know, it wasn't really very much to see because we were like cooking over there. I but, think at the moment people are really doing, like. I don't know, just something a bit different, like using this time to do things that you might not normally do on your channel or on your mm. Instagram. Or I think it's quite exciting. I, ooh, it's good to find a positive out of it anyway, I think, yeah. isn't it? Like find something. Because you've been doing loads of lives on Instagram, haven't you? I have. Um, although I've just decided I'm giving myself the next bank holiday weekend off. Because it's lovely and I love it. And actually, because I'm shielding, I've only really got Chris to talk to. Um, <laughs> the cats are sick of me. Chris, Chris is sort of like decorating and I'm sort of pointing at things and colours that I want and all that, but I haven't got like loads of people that I'm chatting to. So actually, it's quite nice to have that time to have a chat. Like when you said, let's do this, I was like, oh, totally, because it will perk my weekend up. Yeah, I think it's I think it's really nice. And it's nice to be lives as well, because I feel like we're talking like this anyway. <laughs> yeah. we have to, this is how everyone has to talk. Um but yeah, it's really nice because, like you say, you're you're shielding. Other people are isolated by themselves. Like, you know, everyone's got sort of different levels of interactions. I think any interaction is good. <laughs> any extra interaction we can have. Well, oh, a, a wave! I like I, I like that. A wave emoji of oh, an actual wave. wave. Very meta. That's very good. Can you see comments, Simon, or not? No. <laughs> So people can get that absolute uh, off, and I'd just be like, I'm having a lovely time. I'm sure you should be able to see comments because I feel like Jen and Jane could see comments last time. You're are you in Streamyard now? Yeah, I'm in. The is there like a at the, at the, on the right hand side? Is there like a thing which says comments? Comment. You can kick on. Oh, there are people. I can see people there. There you go. I'm to get rid of that weirdo. So that's good. <laughs> oh I also, if I'm with lives, like you feel like you have to do an intro. I've started to think like. I've started to now do like the same thing that I would do on my channel. It's quite weird. Um, and then the other one is if there's any technical glitches and somebody disappears, I forget people are still watching me. So I'm then like, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> looking like a muppet. Oh dear. I don't mean I've been when I've been having work chats, I've just been not really on video. I don't mind other people being on video, but I don't really like <laughs> I don't like being on video myself all the time. Because often I've like not washed my hair or I don't know, I'm obviously not putting makeup on anymore. So <laughs> I don't want people to see me. I'm like, I'm not ready for this. My, My starry moments are at the weekend on YouTube, <laughs> not for work. <laughs> I did enjoy the I needed a reason to like get ready. <laughs> not that I'm not getting ready in the day, but you know what I mean? Not wear jogging yeah. bottoms. Like this is the first time I think denim might have touched me in quite some time. <laughs> but um, I did like, stand up and give us a little twirl of your nice new dungarees. No, I'm not ready for the okay. wave one yet. <laughs> It's like a little, I've got my new t-shirt on, it says, hello, Sunshine. Oh, no, that's like a, a little boob shot for you. Thank you. Well, do you know what? There's been the latest row that um, has happened in the Savage Reads household is that I wanted to put a picture on Instagram yesterday and Chris said I couldn't because it was too crotchy. <laughs> <laughs> that's an interesting, interesting from Chris. Chris <laughs> Be like, sorry, that's too much. Yeah, <laughs> so I might sneak it up later. <laughs> See if anyone notices and I get banned. You could have like, you know how you can have close friends on Instagram? You should have just like everyone but Chris. And then you can <laughs> post it and oh, you might know. <laughs> yeah. 
I'll just do it when I know he's asleep while he's watching the telly or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When he's not paying attention, put his phone in another room or something, and then quickly. quickly yeah. Upload. We might get Wafts of Elaine Page coming through shortly because he's decorating a couple of rooms along, and I said that he could play music and it wouldn't matter because I don't think oh. he could be able to hear it. But um, but Zoom's been really weird. I had the worst first Zoom experience at work when I didn't realise that it was going to automatically turn on, and I literally. Right. I'm not joking, I, it was with the heads of like the British Library, the heads of like the Arts Council, and it, my camera went on, my hair was everywhere, I had stains down my top, and I was just like, I'm coping really well, hi. <laughs> <laughs> hi everyone. <laughs> That's a great way to go. You're looking ravishing in isolation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing really well. Mm. <laughs> coping really well. Love it. Oh, that's good. I've got some good good people here. I did, I did um, post on Instagram as well to ask if anyone had any questions for us. Ooh. So we can have a chat and I do have some questions because I also feel conscious that if I go through the questions, I've seen them all and you haven't. <laughs> that's, quite <laughs> that's, hmm? that's quite exciting. I don't know. Well, it's like I'm interviewing you. Well, I was thinking about this the other day, because um, you know when like, you're doing a, when you do like a and a I've realised I'm not very good at those videos, because I'm so used to interviewing people as a job, I find it really odd when somebody wants to know something, or wants me to answer a question, because I'm like, are you asking me? <laughs> I, I find it, I feel like, <laughs> if someone asks me a question, I, and I might think, oh, that's not interesting, you won't want to know that, even though they've literally asked me. Like, I'll be like, oh, no, nobody wants to hear my answer to this. <laughs> I think that keeps us real. Hmm? It keeps us real. We've yeah. Got people, we've got people from, this is what I really love, and I've started to see some insights, but it ends up being like Eurovision. Because when yeah. I see where people are from, like Tunisia. It's a really good time of day to do it, because you get people from all different time zones, which I think is amazing. Like, we've got Singapore, Tunisia, um, Northern Ireland. Emily Velveteen yeah. said, so glad I'm off work today for this. Love both her channels. I think she took the day off especially. Yeah, I, I mean. <laughs> we, we, uh, well, I'm, I'm pleased. I'm pleased you're all here. What are you, um, what are you reading at the moment, Simon? So, I'm currently reading. Oh, just put it under my laptop as a prop. Hang on. <laughs> I'm getting it. Um, this. Uh, Ooh. Turn uh, and it's because I'm doing a live with her this evening, but, and this is something I don't normally admit, but it's true. Oh, sorry, just using that as a prop again. Um, if I'm interviewing an author, I always read all of their book, unless it's like for a showcase or something. Mm. But with crime novels, I purposefully don't read the last few chapters because then I can't give it away. That's a very, very good tip. Yeah. So I'm reading like very, very good. It's um, gothic and creepy and also about nosing around people's houses, which I'm a big fan of all those things. So it's really, really good. What about you? I'm reading, actually, I think it's down here. It's like it was planned, even though it wasn't. I'm reading Viper Wine. Oh, is it good? Um, oh my God, I love it. I really love it. I'm like, that much through, not very much through, like 40 pages or something. It's really good. It's very weird. It's like a bit it. like, um, did you read Margaret the First? Or something on the cover. Is she not holding a mobile? She's got an iPhone. So at the point, I'm at these are like real historical figures. I think that's what it seems like to me. There's lots of quotes and like portraits and stuff in it. But then at the moment, we're just sort of getting to know about like this woman and her husband. And her husband's been around like on a sea voyage, and then he came back, and everyone was asking questions. And it's like Jeremy Paxman asked him blah blah blah, and then Jonathan Ross asked him this. So it's all very weird and like con like concurrent or all the way through, it's like omniscient, but in like a really meta way. And then at one point, it was like a woman with a uh, Viper wine written on her notebook asked me if I still um, loved my wife. And I said, who are you? And she said, I'm the author. So it's like a bit like Ooh, meta. weird. <laughs> it's a bit weird, but like, but it's really good. I thought this was going to be a bit love-hate. Uh, so far, I'm really loving it. Um, so I was asked to see my bookmark. This is my bookmark. It's Snow White, and it was made by Holly. Holly makes beautiful stuff. Yeah. So she sent me this um, quite a long while ago. Um, but once the live's over, um, I can put things in the description box. I can, leave a link. I can leave a link to Holly's shop. I'll just I'll go. Just, if she's still doing it, huh? I'll just go. If you want it over now, I'll just go. Bye. <laughs> People care much more about bookmarks than you, Steve. Yeah. <laughs>
I just put that up instead of me, actually. I'll just hold it. <laughs> it's a picture of the bookmark. <laughs> of me on a bookmark. I tell you what, though, I finished Hamlet the other the other day. Oh. I'm actually, I'm just. I think I'm like actually depressed now. <laughs> like, I can't get past it at all. Yeah, that book. And it's really interesting because you're a big Shakespeare fan as well. And I'm mm. not so much, is how I'd put it. Um, but I, I love the fact, and I was talking about, who's I talking about this? It, well, Mercedes has mentioned it, and I was talking about it yesterday with um, Sean Hewitt, who I did a live with. Um, it's fascinating that she's using Shakespeare because she doesn't really use his name throughout. It mm. could be anyone, but I think it's because it hangs a load of info for people to grab onto before they've even started. I think it's really clever. Yeah, but I think people know going, you know going in that it's going to be about Shakespeare anyway. So it's almost yeah. like there's no point in her. Yeah. Saying, you know you know that, like, and we know that he wrote Hamlet. Like, that's, that's just like a baseline. And it's all the stuff that you maybe don't know so much about. Um, which, yeah, no, I really, I, I really liked it. And I think it also can be a little bit, when you're doing things like that, like, she could have... I don't know, dropped more hints. You know what I mean? Like it could have, it could have been a little, it could have been done really badly. Like she could have put yeah. some like Shakespeare lines in there or something, which she did it, which I think was like really good. Cause it's, it's like you say, it's like, it's such, it's, it's such an overarching theme that there's no, why even go into it? And you in, know that already. I, I, I just fell in love with Agnes so much, like absolutely head over heels. And I just think, I think it's incredible. I genuinely, I don't use the word masterpiece very often. But that genuinely, I do think, is a masterpiece because really? it's just so minimal as well. She doesn't, she's very sparing. She's very, I don't know. I just think it's an amazing, amazing book. I would not want to be a women's prize judge. No. I think it's so strong this year. Yeah, it's the strong, like me and mum read the long list and we both agreed it's the strongest long list either one of us has ever read. Like it's, wow. and like even the ones that I don't love as much on the short list. They're still really good books, and I can see why they're on there. Mm. I'm just still a little bit smarting from the fact Evie Wilde isn't on there. Yeah, I've not read her. I've not read it yet. But this is only based off of hearsay of, like, everyone else having read her. Um, but, yeah, that is quite a surprise. But then you never know what happens behind the scenes and who was no. put forward and, you know. Who you need to put a curse on. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica Hinton says she's halfway through Hamlet. So clever that she never mentions Shakespeare. The book's a revelation. Correct. Mm. Uh, correct. <laughs> um, oh, who do we think will win? I see. I've read Hamlet, and actually, who else is on there? I'm getting confused. I, weather. I didn't really. Like... <laughs> what do you mean? Um, I don't think Dominicana will. And. Uh, <clears throat> I've not read the uh, the Wolf Hall ones. Yeah, I think that, that's got a shot. I just I have this thing that I feel like with sequels and series, I don't know. Everyone's saying you can read it alone, and I'm sure you can. I haven't got to it yet because I want to read Bring Up the Bodies yeah. this time. But I just feel like I don't know. I've, I've, I don't know where I, I feel like I sit on the fence. And I'm giving myself splinters about whether series of books should be on lists or not. Hmm. It's hard, but then that because that is the, the issue I felt like with the, the testaments was that I think people were awarding um, the Handmaid's Tale, not the testaments. Like, I don't good. think the testaments on its own. Put up, well, that's like a whole other conversation, but I don't think it should have won at all. But that's not necessarily because it's a sequel, but I think it just like, yeah, I don't know. It's an interesting question like, whether sequels should be on at all. Yeah. I think it just it influence your, your judging. Sorry, I was just saying, because Lauren and the books were saying, I don't think they should. Oh, hi. And I think Lauren is Lauren. correct. <laughs> I think Lauren's correct. Um, <laughs> it is a big investment, but it's a big, it's especially a big investment for Hilary Mantel, isn't it? Let's like, That's a bit, I feel like the, the literary world are saying you have to read all of them because <laughs> they're so good and they're always winning every prize. Um, I think on a normal series, it's not necessarily a big investment. No, but also no. these ones come with the baggage of like two Booker wins. Um, yeah. I just, I feel a bit, I don't feel sorry for her because she's made lots of money, but I just think, <laughs> can't you just be judged on, she needs to just be judged on that book, but actually she's being judged on the whole way around. It's one big series, isn't it really? Yeah, she's got a lot of pressure on it to be good. And like, I will be interested to read it. 
Well, like, if it doesn't win the booker, it'll be like, oh, well, she let that. Yeah, that's a shit one. <laughs> oh, don't read the last one. It gets, oh, that right down it. <laughs> um, and it's interesting because Wolf Hall is such a foundation book. And then Bring Up the Body sort of, I found it more accessible. I just love Anne Boleyn so much I couldn't cope with how real I found it. Yeah. So I, I, don't want the, I don't want that to come, so I shall put this book down. I think he's going to be all right. <laughs> That's how I felt reading Hamlet. I was like, I think it will probably all be fine. <laughs> <laughs> this book isn't going to make me sad. <laughs> Hamlet will be all right. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, um, I, know, I think that book comes with so much. So, I mean, for me, I think it would probably end up being between... I'm um, Also, actually, the one that I keep wanting to rave about to people is the Natalie Haynes is amazing. Oh, yeah, I've not read that yet. That's everything. I think I just, there were so many... <laughs> There were just so many like myth retellings out like all at the same time, and I was like, I just read Cersei and then um, the Silence of the Girls, and then I was like, oh, I just can't do it again. But I, I really do want to read that. She does really clever things. She um, and like my mum is really, really because mum's a classic. She's really hard on books like that. But she mm -hmm. was like the fact that Natalie used almost every single different version of every single woman and combined them all to this one set of voices. She said it was amazing. But also, it's um. It does for me, this is going to sound snarky and a bit bitchy, but it does for me everything the silence of the girls promised it would do and didn't. I think that's probably fair because I really enjoyed Silence of the Girls, but then I, it's one of those things where I was like, I don't think it would have, for me, it wouldn't have like won an award. I was like, I just enjoyed it, but it was like almost there. So I just don't think that makes it sense. It wasn't, mm -hmm. it wasn't giving the women their voices, though, I didn't think. It wasn't, it wasn't. I think what's weird is the bits of it that I really enjoyed were the bits where at the end he's got the voices of all the mothers of the soldiers that have died and the way they talk about their sons and talk about how they were when they were children. And I was like, oh, I, I really like this bit. But if the point of the book is to give a voice to women, they're still talking about all the men that died. So, so it's, it's, I don't know. But that doesn't mean I didn't enjoy it just on its own merit. But I think it practiced it out to do something, like you say, and it didn't actually deliver on that promise necessarily. Yeah. Which is hard, like that makes me feel harsh, isn't it? Like that, but I don't know. And Mum loved that one, but hmm. I just found it a bit like Cersei gave Cersei a voice and a story, and I got the whole gist. And this book very cleverly, um, A Thousand Ships, cleverly gives every single character. Is and like some of them, like I, I don't remember all the classics that my mum read me as a kid, but I knew some of them, like. Um, uh, well, the story of Clytemnestra, like, mm. you know, no spoilers that she's going to kill her husband, but you're still gripped by it. Like, even though you know some of the spoilers, you still want to read ahead. So, yeah, yeah. I could wang on about that book a while. So, yeah, I think it's going to be really tough. I, I think probably, though, it's going to be between Hilary Mantel, Margot Fowl, and Bernadine Everstow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I did forget about Girl, Girl Woman Other. I think Hannah um, did a comment just now about Girl Woman Other. Like, oh, yeah, to be fair, that was, I was, Flawed by that book, I loved it. So I would, yeah, I, I did really enjoy Hamlet. I think I preferred Girl Woman Other. It's tricky because at the moment, Hamlet's my book of this year and Girl Woman Other was my book of last year. Mm -hmm. So I can't, and that's why I'm really glad. I mean, they've never asked and they, they wouldn't because I'm a man. But I, I don't know, I, I think it's really tricky. And also there's the whole thing of like, should Bernadine win because she's already won? Like the whole thing around Hillary as well. And you're just like, judge, like I'm, I've judged a couple of prizes and I'm judging one at the moment. And you just have to go on what the book is by yeah. itself and your responses to it. Um, maybe I don't judge properly though, because I am about the prose and the, you know, the, the whole shebang. But for me, it also has to be a book that really resonates with me. Mm -hmm. like, what yeah, I know what you mean. I think it's hard because the point of prizes is to help the author to help book sales and help to help them write more and to promote books, which I think is what is great about having a long list and a short list, because then all of those books get that kind of um uh platform. Yeah. But I but I do think if one book is just amazing, why can't it win all the prizes? Because it's the best book. It should. I don't know, surely that's the point of judging, is that it's the best one of those. Yeah. or whatever it's not really about like like a prize isn't really about taking turns or about you know you can't just do it for 
well, you know, these are the books that won prizes, this is the debut novel, so that author's still got X, Y, and Z to do. You actually just have to literally, well, which one is it? But that's also what I love about prizes, because you will get a debut versus Mantel, or, and I just think that's great, because it's, it's, and I think that's what I loved about the Women's Prize long list overall, was that it had a real, it was a proper mix. Like, I think it was mm. the most, it wasn't the most diverse in terms of where the authors came from, but in terms of reading the stories, they were really, really, really diverse. Like really. The type of literature, I feel, was just so different. All the styles yeah. were different. Yeah, it's really good. Um, <clears throat> yeah, but then I remember, because that's one thing I really like about the Costa Prize so much, is that each, you've got different categories. Yeah. So it feels like you're not pissing up like debut authors against really established people. It doesn't feel too unfair, which I think is really great. Yeah, because I suppose it is that kind of, I don't know, you want everyone to be on a level playing field, but at the same time, it kind of isn't a level playing field. And although, you know, there are some debuts that I think come out and you just think, wow, that's insanely brilliant. But also I think the industry is so pushing debuts over everything else that it's just like, come on, you know, what about authors who are on that like, third, second, third, fourth book who are struggling a bit more and aren't selling mm -hmm. as well? It's dangerous. Mm -hmm. Actually, the sharks are waiting for them. Yeah, it actually shouldn't sort of, shouldn't matter if something's a debut. I don't ever expect a debut to be that amazing. So, it I don't know. They are. Mm. You know, with debuts you can get a load of hype, like, and I think that doesn't help. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know, I, said, I just think the industry's funny. I noticed that somebody said they couldn't get Hamnet in Spain, but apparently it's because, like, we have almost run out, well, not almost run out of books, but we are close to it because the, really? the supply chain isn't there. They're like that's oh, okay. at the moment or or very few um and like i think quite a lot of books sold out on a lot of international selling book sites quite quickly and i think right. waterstones is struggling foils are struggling to get some copies of books so it's a weird proper weird old time i wouldn't want to be published right now which is the other reason i did the insta lives is because i thought i want to be able to like if there's some authors who I've got a book habit in hardback or paperback now. T that's a tough, tough time. So generally, everyone that's been on, bar Natalie, has had a newly out hardback or a newly out paperback. And yeah. that's kind of trying to do it. But it's hard, like you say, because a lot of bookshops, I think, as well, are, um, you know, just selling what they have. But get the new books coming through is yeah. really difficult. Um, and haven't they done things like they're publishing... They've laid like Sarah Moss's book or something, Gemma's saying. I'm not really hot, hot on what's happening in the publishing world. I don't really know. I just get told. But I think I mean, they've laid when they're actually releasing. Like some things yeah. are coming out on Kindle, but then the hardback or whatever is going to come out later May in the year and things like that. Hardbacks that were due out in May, June, July and August are now coming out in winter, spring. So like loads of stuff has literally been moved back to next year. Ali Smith's summer has been put back, but that's also because of what's happened and she needs to write that into it. Oh my God, of course. <laughs> oh, so, Ali. So I think that's gone for like a month or two, I think. But, Wasn't that due in August or something? I think it was due, I feel like it was due in- I'm June, making that up. But I think it might now be August, so it has shifted. Okay. Um, but it's that thing where I feel really bad because I have a set of shelves here where I put them in date order. And then the week I just looked at it and went, oh, for God's sake. <laughs> I have no idea now. It's all, it's all wrong. It's all yeah. different. I don't like reading books too far in advance. Mm. You've got no one to talk about it with. I don't get priests very often. Oh, like, unless it's something great. that I'm like, I really want one thing. I normally just don't ask for them just because it, because of that. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. I, I feel like it's quite bad just to review a book and say, oh, my God, it re I really loved it. You're going to have to wait six months to read it. I feel yeah. like there's almost no point. And it also, it's, it's weird because if you do that, like I read Queenie when I got the proof mm. back in summer 2018. So when, so when people were talking about the Women's Prize, I didn't mention it in my predictions and it's because I'd read it two years ago. So I was just like, <laughs> for now, I completely forgot about it. <laughs> um, and Lauren in the book says current. Does she mean buns or the topic? <laughs> <laughs> current topics. Shall we, uh, speaking of current, Ooh. I don't know, know what that segue was, shall we, just, shall we see what the questions were we yeah. got sent? Oh shit, it disappeared. Oh no. <laughs> it was gone. It was, oh, well, it was over 24 hours ago, wasn't it? It was, to... but it'll be in my archive, it's fine. Yeah. 
that was close. I do remember some of them if I if it if it's deleted anyway. Yeah. I feel like I need to do something entertaining while you're looking and I can't think of anything. It's fine. We're, we're here, we're here. I feel like I can paper back out of here like a magic <laughs> Like a kangaroo? Yeah. I'm just, I'm just ready at any, at any <laughs> Right, I've got uh, the first book. The first question is from Emily. Um, Emily Marie Jarvis and she says, what book on your TBR pile are you most excited about? It's quite Ooh. a big question. So I'm sure your TB bar pile is like. Do, 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 do. I think of one though, definitely. Um, the new Rose Tremaine. Oh, you love Rose Tremaine, don't you? Yeah, and she's doing lesbian nurses in Victorian Bath. I mean, I think I might. Mic drop. Yeah. <laughs> that good. What about I you? Know the best history with Rose Tremaine, but I feel like that sounds really interesting. I know we had this conversation a few years ago. I'm sure. <laughs> I've obviously grabbed it, and now you're picking it a scab. I'm bringing it back. You know in that video that you um you posted that we did when I came up to Liverpool that time? Yeah, the one where you were not the nicest about Rebecca. Yeah, I don't think I was nice about Rose Tremaine either. <laughs> this was my ploy, get you on here, and then we go, <laughs> yeah. Get me on here and then troll me. I think, my, I think the one I'm looking forward to most is Summer Water um, by Sarah Moss. Because that's the other half of Ghost Ghost Wall or something, isn't it? Really? Well, Jen said this to me the other day, and now I'm acting like, mm, like I'm friends with Sarah, and I know. But um, apparently, it was going to be like one one whole thing, and then she split it into two novellas. That's what oh, I hear. Exciting. She's moved publishing as well. Controversial. Has she? Oh yeah, of course, of course she has. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But I'm looking forward to that. I've got, it, I've got it downloaded on my Kindle, so I can just read that whenever. Oh, really? because, because it's on my Kindle, I keep forgetting that I have it. <laughs> just like looking at my all my physical work that I need to get through as well. I don't know what you're oh. talking about, Lauren. Can't can't think what that must be like. What? <laughs> yeah. Not read yet? What are you talking about? I can't I've point read that. all of these. <laughs> um, hmm. Oh, what so, questions do I ask? My cat and my dungarees, they wouldn't fit. Oh. Very cute. They're just sick of me, so they will go in. That would be so nice. I think they are too big, though, probably. <laughs> like a like room. Um, we've got. How have your reading habits been affected by lockdown? Are you reading more slash less, or different genres, or? Ooh, uh, less initially. Getting there now, but I also am really behind with like I haven't done my April wrap up part two yet. I'm going to do it after this actually just because I haven't my brain's been all over the place um, and I have to remind myself of what I've read which is not and, and then I'll do it and I'll be like oh my god that book was amazing so how have I forgotten that I've read it but I think it's because everything else is going on because also I wasn't sure what's was going to happen with my job and mm. what's going on it was a bit like of a time so um, less but also my reading taste has shifted and I, I can't do anything that's too dense I just I'm like I'm currently too dense to read anything that's too dense yeah that makes sense. I know what you mean. Um, yeah, I played, right at the beginning, yeah, I wasn't reading as much at all because I always used to read on my commute. Like, that was, like, my time. Or if I'm, like, just anywhere, I'd always read on transport. So it's kind of hard to get into that routine of just reading at home because I don't do that very much, really, at least not, like, on weekdays. Um, but I think I've got into the swing of it now. But I was the same. Like, I've stopped reading, like, non-fiction I, I just I just want something that I feel really excited about or something that I know is going to really grab me. Yeah. Because um, I, I mean, initially I was a bit sceptical about reading this one because I thought it might be quite hard going and tense, but it's actually I'm getting into it very quickly. I think that kind of thing, if you've got a long book but you really love it, then that's like the perfect thing right now. I want yeah. something that's going to make me want to read. Although I think I've found some short, sharp books have helped just to get me, like I read the new Caris Davis. And that was brilliant because it was that perfect short chapters, short punchy novella, right, I'm off. And that really, really helped. So mm -hmm. and I think also um, I'm trying things that I wouldn't normally try because I think if I go to what I normally read, I don't know, there's just something at the moment where my brain's just a bit like, oh, I'm not I'm not 100% sure about it. And also because me and mum were trying to read the Women's Prize Longlist by Longlist Day, and that shifted a little bit. I think we both just were like, actually, let's ease off a little bit. And if we've read a bit of every one, that's fine. But let's not 
force like me going, oh, I'll just read, uh, bring up the bodies and uh, the mirror and the light by Friday. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. <laughs> oh, yeah, also, I, actually, because I, I tried doing things like reading loads of books, like as many books as I can and things like that. And I was like, actually, that's that's put me off. I had I did read more, but it made me not enjoy the reading as much. Yeah. And that's what I find whenever there's normally long lists to read or something. I'm just like, oh, but now I don't want to. I'm going to read this book instead. <laughs> and maybe something by deadline like, sort of takes the fun out of it a bit, doesn't it? So readathons, I was really bad with Aussie April. And I think partly that's because I read a lot of Australian fiction anyway. Mm. But with even like now with Asian readathon, which I'm doing, I can sort of, I've made this TV and I got so excited and I did a video about it and I was like, yes, I'm going to get all these books off my shelves. And I was like, mm, I want to read something else. <laughs> <laughs> we're like we're our own worst enemies I'm like oh I don't want to read that now yeah. what's been affected most for me is audiobooks because that oh. was my listening so like because I was traveling up and down the country for work and now I'm not that's really hit that and what's been noticeable about that is my non-fiction reading has just gone right well here I have a I have a question here from um somebody who said how do you choose your audiobooks that's quite a good that is a good segue yeah, um, How, no, I was planned, I was prepared with these questions. <laughs> they're all in a specific order. <laughs> um, um, non-fiction is my go-to with audio. I really struggle with fiction. Right. Um, I just, I, I can listen to something about the length of the arches, which is currently on hold, so I can't even talk about that. I start to yeah. what I'm do until the end of the month, listen to reruns from 1984. I don't think so. Um, oh, you might enjoy that. I don't think I will. <laughs> I think I'll know they're dead. <laughs> um, but, um, Would you like to go with these characters? Why has that suddenly happened again? Where have they brought that person back from? But um, no, I, I really struggle really, really badly with fiction. And the next, um, well, I started re-listening to an audio book, which is called On the Red Hill by Mike Parker. And it's gorgeous. It's about... Um, Mike and his partner, who were at the wedding of the first, sorry, the first gay wedding in Wales of this this really lovely couple, who owned B and Bs for the last like twenty years, even when it was illegal for gay men to be gay, and they leave them the house, and so you get this kind of story of these generations of gay men, but it's not set in a city. It's all about the countryside and the different way people accept and they don't. And the only bit I have got a bit, and it's where I stopped listening last time and I've got back to it now, is that one of them's a bit of a one and I find it a bit uncomfortable. Like he really manipulates men and it makes you feel a bit icky. But other than that, it's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> but how is, what's the perspective it's told from though? It's told like, from Parker's, so it's it's his story of meeting them, then discovering all of their old archives and going through all of their library and going right. all the stuff when they manipulative. He talks to people who knew them and like he talked about how they would be friends with somebody and then just completely drop them. Like, oh, I see. It's, it's the other people, the other couple you yeah. know. Right. Okay. And it's how they said so the, the surviving couple sort of go back and look at the history of the of the passing girl. It's just really, really beautifully done. But the one that I really want to get to next is Olivia Lang's Funny Weather, which oh. is, all, is essays about art in emergency throughout history. So it's where there's been some huge, like the AIDS epidemic or anything like that, and how artists have rallied and responded to those moments. I think that's going to be really good. Will that be difficult? That sounds really good. Will that be difficult to see without, I find it difficult when people talk about art and stuff, because I feel like, like in book, because I feel like I need to see the picture. Well, that's a good point. I hadn't thought about that. I guess she's talking about art. But I don't think it's an audio book. You can sort of look it up at the same time while you're listening because you're yeah. reading. Yeah. No, I think I hadn't even thought of it like that. The only thing I've been thinking about with that audio book is that it's read by my Doctor Who companion when I was a kid. <laughs> so I think there's going to be a lovely nostalgic thing as I hear. Oh, that's great. Right. What about you with audio books? Yeah, I read, I read non-fiction as well. I listen to non-fiction as well. And I think it's because I've just got, I got to audio books by a... Like podcasts, mm. like I find it really hard to listen yeah. to people acting things out, like reading stuff in my head. Like if, if something's a bit too like descriptive, I don't, well, I don't know. I've not really, I've not really tried it, but I normally prefer if something's more literary to read it, so I can like read the structure of the sentence and things. Um, but I am listening to um, Hallie Rubenhold's book, oh. The Covent Garden Ladies. Oh, I thought you were going to say the Five. I love the Five. No, because I read, I, I listened to the Five. And that was really, I loved it because I really love how she builds up the worlds. 
it's not just like oh this person did that it's you get so much context for what was going on at the time and like you know the sights and smells of London or whatever and all this stuff she's really good and this one's about um the Harris's list of Co Covent Garden prostitutes oh wow in um, the 18th century oh, so about how that became, how that was written but also about some of the people who were around at the time in Covent Garden and what it was like to be a prostitute in Covent Garden at the time and stuff like that it's really good that sounds nice. I like that I might I might that might be another one that I had to actually and I did I, I like, it, I, it, it, her stuff works really well on audiobook I think because yeah. you paint such good pictures of the characters I feel like I can I can really I can really remember who's who because sometimes it's quite difficult I was listening to another history book before this one and although it was I guess it was quite clever it was just all about like oh just socio-economic political like movement and I was like oh it's I can't listen to this on audiobook. This isn't what I'm here for. <laughs> I think, <laughs> the murder, that's what I want. <laughs> yeah, novel, isn't there? Like, I, I quite like narrative non-fiction more than anything. Also, mm. I'm quite a spoiled brat, because if I want to read a memoir, I want the person who wrote the memoir to do it. Um, and when it's not them, I have a mini sulk. Because I just I just think the, the inflection of somebody who's actually been through it as they read it to you is so powerful. Yeah. And, and the one that I've read... Or the one that I listened to that amazed me the most so far was um, Saeed Jones. Um, oh, I can see it, but I can't think what the title is. Anyway, it's amazing. Um, Mercedes has got me onto it. Um, and having him read it to me for seven hours, it was before I left the libraries and I was doing a seven hour day in a stock room. <laughs> and, but it just, it took me away totally. And it, the way that he read it and his relationships and how he described them and the brutal honesty i just i loved it it was so 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 good but i can't remember the title of it there's one question that somebody asked about libraries that i just wanted to answer because oh yeah i learned something the other day and i don't know if i'm allowed to talk about this or not because it's slightly controversial but i'm going to anyway and i'll probably get in trouble um but somebody asked about um libraries and getting uh libraries will still be ordering all the new books that are out during lockdown and there'll be a big lot of new stuff on the open no at the moment they're having to put all their money into e-books and e uh, audio books and this I learned only the other day did you know how much an a pdf for an e-reader for a library costs for one book no 22 pounds 22 pounds yeah it is horrific horrific so I only learned that the other day and I've got right on my old what course. for the library to buy the e-book that's how much yeah. it costs them yeah and you can only loan that book to one person at a time and for a certain amount of times like what? it's Horrific. What for the amount of time? It's like it stops. Yeah, because the licensing laws is just ridiculous. How much so, does it? Do, do, do books cost libraries the same amount of time, same books, amount books. as it would mean in a shop anyway, like a normal book. How much does yeah, it cost the library? A discount, um, because they'll buy in bulk with other libraries, but um, but with ebooks because of the licensing laws and all sorts, and because like unlike if you buy a physical book, obviously the, the publishers can't take it away if they go bust. But if you yeah. buy book and they go bust the, the content would vanish because you've technically only bought the license mm -hmm. so I just learned that the other day because I was thinking oh it must be like one night and I like it is when it's an offer <laughs> on it or whatever and it really really shocked me because we did a big bid where we got a thousand pounds for every single library service so 151,000 we did bid for and got it so that they could get e-readers and I was like gosh that'd be able to buy like thousands with that 20 books That's oh cool. my god <laughs> there's waiting lists at the moment in libraries this is what's so shocking for up to nine months for certain ebooks now. Like it just. Wow, that is crazy. They're spending nearly all of their book budget on those. So when they reopen, they won't have as much book budget at all to buy new books. So it's going to cause a real problem. Do they have to be buying ebooks though? I suppose so that they can keep a service going. Well, also because since the library's closed, and this is a brilliant, this is one brilliant bit of data that came out of it. Um, over, you know, I think it was in three days, 160,000 new people signed up for library services. Like, oh my I think it's when bookshops closed as well. And now that's gone up to, I think, something like 400,000 new users. And so libraries are like, well, how do we? And I should explain yeah. to you, and I work in my job, my day job is working for, well, all libraries really. Um, sounds very grand, doesn't it? All, all libraries, they can't come through me. <laughs> and I charge them 22 pounds an ebook. <laughs> But, um, but no, it, it just it blew my mind, and I feel like if people knew that because it's public money, mm. I just it's all a bit wrong. Anyway, sorry, I just thought I'd mention that because somebody saw it. It's a, a little passion thing of mine at the moment. Mm. 
Mm. No, it's interesting. I didn't know that. And it's, it's uh, well, I feel like the way, the way people take reliabilities for granted in any way, in general, is just bad, isn't it? Because they provide such an amazing service. Yeah. And people just expect them to be there. But don't want to give them the funding. And also, what's scary at the moment is they've been closed. Um, it might be an opportunity for people to say, well, they were closed and it didn't matter, so we won't reopen that one, that one, and that one. Um, yeah. It's a bit of a. So once everything's back open, be sensible, but everyone head to your library. But yeah. just straight away, two meters yeah. apart. Yeah. Set all in the library. Yeah. Oh God, yeah. Sorry, I can't I wait for my library. Yeah. Need to get out of my system. No, it's, that's what this is for. It's fine. We're answering questions. We're like on our soapboxes. Everything goes. <laughs> Therapy. Exactly. <laughs> Where is a um, thing I wanted to? I wanted. To, oh, this is a question. I wanted to ask you actually. Um, uh, somebody's uh, Michael has asked, "Who are your favourite Irish authors?" And mm. also, what your what are your thoughts on the normal people TV adaptation? So, my uh, favourite Irish author is John Boyne, I love. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, I just bought The Hearts and Visible Furies um, well, the other week. Ahead. I know, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I've just seen he's got a new one out this autumn, and I'm so excited I could wee. Um, <laughs> why? This is why. <laughs> who knows? Um, but um, who else do I love? I really liked Edna O'Brien's recent one. I know it's controversial, but I really, really love that. Um, it was hard work, but um, I'm trying to think of who my other like favourite Irish authors are. This is where you know when you're doing something, you get a question like that. You're instantly as if you're like, I've never read an Irish book in my life. Exactly, that's how I feel when I read that question. I was like, Oh no, I feel like you would be better than me because I think you've read more Irish authors and also perhaps have an, an idea of who's Irish and who isn't. Because I think I don't. Yeah, I, I mean, I've read Anne Enright recently. I just, I think, I love her. I don't like Anne Enright. Her, some of her are beautiful, but it, I also think she's quite prone to melodrama. Like, <laughs> and then suddenly, like with the Green Road, it suddenly just went off on this ridiculous murder. And I was like, oh, you've lost me, mate. So I, I see the Green Road is one of those ones that I like. I remember looking back on what I'd read on Goodreads, and I think I'd given it like three or four stars. And I'm like, could have been about anything. I can't remember it at all. <laughs> I remember the New York HIV bit that blew my mind. Her, that writing was stunning. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But the rest of it, I can't. But I just remember yeah. there being one at the end. I thought um, it was even about that. I'm going to say John Boyne. John Boyne, and I also John like John Boyne. Boyne. And I also like John Boyne. Okay. So, so that's a great list. Thank I you. love it. What are yours? Um, see, I, I don't know. I'm going to say that a lot of the people that I've read, is it's because, like, I don't know. Like, I remember reading the Lisa McInerney from which was on the Women's Prize like however four years ago four years ago um obviously like Milkmen and things and I think I've read well I suppose that's Northern Irish McBride. but like huh? Emma McBride there we go oh yeah of course I know but I don't like her like I only like her first one yeah her first one is the best um oh somebody's mentioned Graham Norton Helen you're a genius because Graham Norton is it's one of those authors, and Lauren got me on to him, other Lauren, um, it, because I was a bit like, hmm, celebrity writing a novel. He's brilliant. He's so... Yeah, I've heard this, that people really like his books. They're really dark, and they're really affected, okay. and the characters are amazing. I think characters are probably my favourite thing in, in fiction. Um, I can have not a lot happen, or like a woman can walk to the shops for 90 pages thinking about a divorce, but if she's got a great character, I, I can be totally swept up with it um, but he does he does it really really brilliant and it, it just takes it to unexpected places I think he's got one out this autumn and he treated his yeah. first and that's the problem as well is I don't have that many authors I don't know about you where I avidly read everything they've ever done yeah no I'm re I'm quite bad at that it depends on what point I come to an author mm. so if, if like the first book I read of theirs is like a debut or something then I find it much easier to be like oh they've yeah. got a new one out or something but I find <laughs> if I find someone I like I'm not very good at being proactive and reading some like all their old, older stuff. Yeah. I'm not very good at that. Um, shall we, well, can we buddy read a Graham Norton book? Yeah, if you get a Holden, you haven't read Holden yet, but yeah, let's buddy read Holden. That's yeah. his first one. His first one, yeah. yeah. I've, never, I've never read anything, but I'd like to. No, well, definitely. That's that's it. It's a date. It's a date. Um, normal okay. people wise, sexy AF. I'm like 
distraught. Like I'm, and also, I don't know what I feel anymore. But like, also, I feel like I, you know, I did really like normal people when it came out, and I feel like everyone was, everyone then went mental over it. And it's like one of those things with like Fleabag, where people have like so much. It becomes such a like middle class millennial thing that everyone loved and everyone hyped up. But it is still good. Like even though it's cliche to say you love normal people, I'm like yeah, but it was really good. <laughs> I, I, I really liked it. I, really, I, um, I, I wanted to hate the book because everyone was using the word millennial, and I have a real problem with that. Um, I'm old, but also, well, no, because I am. Like, I do something. I know what you mean. Yeah, but I don't think it's about. I don't think it's about millennials. I think it's something that anyone could. Yeah, they can, and that's what I love. I read it, but I think the pitch was this is the millennial book of you know, and this is the voice of the millennials. And I just thought, oh, um, <laughs> and I didn't read conversations with friends, which I now desperately want to read. I think I liked conversations with friends. I loved normal people. Conversations with friends was really good, and then it got to the end, and it just went a bit like, oh, so it didn't quite. <laughs> I look forward to it, <laughs> <laughs> but it was good. I did really enjoy reading it, but I think like normal people is like that was really really well written yeah. as a whole thing. But I loved the adaptation. I think I've just had like a really hard week because we like watched all of normal before. I was reading Hamnet, like you know, you just think like at the end of like this, this weekend, I've just been like, oh. <laughs> everything is. <laughs> You've put yourself through it there. I really have. <laughs> it's been an emotional roller coaster. <laughs> I thought, um, what I loved as well was I was nervous about the adaptation because I thought oh, the whole point of the book is that you as the reader know all the unsaid between the two characters. And I was like, how the heck are they going to do that in a TV show? How are you going to get all of the missed moments or the miscommunication or the sort mm -hmm. of the versus you know which you can see as a reader when you're in both of their heads but I thought they did it absolutely brilliant I literally I just think it's it's amazing in um, fact I think it, I think it probably in a way worked better than the book I mean to be fair I can't remember like Will kept asking me like is this like the book because we were watching it and I was like to be honest I don't really remember like the plot of the book I just remember the arc of their relationship because yeah. that's what it is I don't remember what happens um but I felt like the TV show actually made me care more about both of them because I felt like I understood them more yeah I can I think it was just they were presented more empathetically yeah and you just and think I, like... I think also there was something where I don't know you could see the physicality which you can't in a book I mean you can depict it yourself and mm -hmm. um, I said the physicality is what stopped Chris from watching it because at episode two after nine minutes of sex he was like I'm just not in I'm not here for this Simon like <laughs> off he went with a fan. I'm not here for this. I'm not here for this. This is just porn. And off he went. See, I loved it. I loved the way the sex is. Now, I, I, yeah, no, I thought it I was. I think it like, made sense. Yeah. But also, it wasn't gratuitous and it did sum up their relationship and what, you know, there are yeah. people in your past, not to get too racy on a Sunday, God's day. <laughs> And um, that you do like my first husband. I'll be honest. I, we, there was a certain thing, um, and that's what happens with certain people. I'm not saying there's not with my current husband, as I like to call him. <laughs> my current husband. Yeah. Who knows who could be in the future? But now, <laughs> it, I think that she she caught that really well, and I think the TV show caught it. I think it was really, and I think her involvement really, really helped. Yeah, probably. I'm sure, but it's. Um... Yeah, and I like it because it's, I think often in, it must be hard to translate stuff like that to the screen um, and it be done tastefully and all the rest of it. But also I think what was good is it's an important part of communication and like that's an important part of a relationship. So yeah. it needs to be on there. Like that's, they're not really communicating through words, but they are through sex. I like that's an important thing to show. But also it becomes very much about her sexual quirks as well and and where mm. they it's quite hard to watch um, and I should say like I think one thing they haven't mentioned a lot is that it's quite a triggering show um, mm. and kind of shared that as much as maybe they should have but now I think it's great I almost like want a second series <laughs> <laughs> have you watched Hollywood what have you watched Hollywood on Netflix Hollywood no what is it it's about um almost an alternate version of now in the 1950s in Hollywood when women and queer people sort of take control 
and it's so good. It's by Ryan Murphy, who did like um, he did the Bette Davis and Joan Crawford. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and he, it's that's really really good. And also, Dead to Me Too is also amazing. Because I, it's on Netflix. yeah. Ooh. So it's very saucy, um, but brilliant, and it's kind of oh. yes, <laughs> yes. Can you just like, yes, all right, Lauren. <laughs> Whatever. And then, and then we've also just discovered working mums. All right. Shouldn't be like the premise doesn't really make me think. Oh, how exciting! It's about you know a mums group, really. But from the first episode, I've not laughed that much. Like, there's some corking, like, I don't know, TV going on at the moment. Yeah, it's really it helping, isn't it? Read. What? <laughs> it was not helping me read. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is hard, actually. Like, I always feel like there's too much to do. It's like I've got all these books and I've got all this telly and I'm like, oh, I just don't want to do any of it. <laughs> I'm just going to have a nap. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's have another I, I find, do you find that the day is going quicker? I'm finding I feel like the days go slowly. Oh, really? But the weeks go quicker. I, I don't know. I find that suddenly it's like two o'clock. I'm like, where's that day going? I, yeah, on a weekend, I feel like that. Oh, okay. But on a weekday where I'm working, I just feel like, oh my God, how is it still only like 11 o'clock? Um, but yeah, but the week, I feel like I'm looking forward to weekend, weekends and then I'm just being like, oh, and that was gone. <laughs> Like straight away, like it, nothing's happened. Yeah, I think I'm a bit spoiled because I work three days now. Um, mm. Every weekend's a bank holiday weekend. That's what so, I mean. Like. Oh, and <laughs> I was already having time off. Oh, uh, I just I feel like that's good because like I'm probably working like in the mornings, mm. and then get to the afternoon, and I'm like, oh, that's the end of my work. <laughs> like I find it really hard to motivate myself, but something like three days a week would be easier. <laughs> Though. And also, yeah. my job's got busier, which I wasn't expecting. I thought I'd actually lose it, but thankfully they've kept me on. I passed my probation this week, which was good. Oh, but, um, so good. Another thing where I was like, this is why they're being really lovely to me, but they could actually now turn around and go, <laughs> yeah. you know, your project's furloughed for, until further notice, so we'll get rid of it, but they've not, they've kept me on. Um, I do find, yeah, the, the other days of the week just go way too quickly, way too quickly. It's weird, isn't it? Yeah. And I just, yeah, I can't, I, and I also think every so often I just have to sort of, do you find you're telling yourself you're in a, you're in a film? <laughs> That's the only way I can sort of process it properly. I'm like, oh, I'm in a movie. Yeah, and this is the thing that happens as part of the film. Yeah. <laughs> like the film of your life. Over already. <laughs> this is why you have to keep keep, keep making vlogs. <laughs> so that it is, that you are in a film, it's fine. Well, I love your vlogs. Your vlogs are some of my absolute pleasure. I said oh, the thank vlogs. you. I just, I find them so calming and like Jen's I find really calming as well Um, I just I love Jen's biscuit baking the other day that was <laughs> genius Um, I was like gonna get Chris to do it for me and pretend it was me <laughs> <laughs> oh that would be cheating professionals <laughs> oh wow it's exactly like the book <laughs> but now I, I, lo I love your vlogs thank you I'm, I'm shooting one this weekend good I look so you'll have one to watch in a in a few days time um but I'm, I'm trying to do more of them because what else is there to do <laughs> when you're filming stuff like i i will realize like i'll just be like i'm talking to the camera and i just think who cares what i've just said for a minute? like literally who gives a stuff <laughs> or how many times can i be sat in another room in my house reading a book like i know <laughs> I feel like that. I'm like, oh, look, another shot of me reading. Wow. <laughs> oh, look, <laughs> riveting. <laughs> shot of Mildred yawning. <laughs> like, it's me pouring a coffee. It is just so. But it's nice. I quite, I find them really relaxing to watch when people don't even do anything, really. Just, like, take you around their little day at home. I quite like watching, like, domestic vlogs. Yeah. But, yeah, when it's, when it's yours, you just think, like, <laughs> I really um I really recommend Tali of um, my reading days. Her channel is Constant Vlogs. That's all oh, she does. Nice. Is constant reading vlogs and and just the whole. And she's always like, "This is so boring. It's me and my kids, and we're going to well, they haven't been going to the shops for a while, but now they're in Australia and they're being released. They can." 
But I'm just like, no, I love this. I love these sort of like random, although I'm quite jealous because she has like big parrots in her garden. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, and we've just got grumpy magpies. It's not the same. I don't think I like big birds at all. I tell you what, this morning on the um, on our roof terrace, um, a duck has hatched ducklings. Oh, There's a tiny little clutch of ducklings, about nine or ten of them, and like huddling in our, on our roof terrace. Um, so we like put some water out for them, and then our neighbour, because apparently he was like, "This is the third time <laughs> this duck has laid eggs here," so <laughs> he, he knows how to do it. Like he's spoken to the RSPCA and everything, so he's gonna like collect them and take them down to the canal because oh. there's like a whole way you have to do it so you don't like scare the mum duck away and all this stuff I was like oh my god ducklings oh my god, like, you live here in my flat <laughs> you, have to downstairs. you live in my bath <laughs> but no, seriously my first my very first pet was a duck and oh. she was called Rapunzel and she ducks imprint on you so she yeah was well, she friendly yeah she I'd call her and she'd fly to my feet and we had a lawn that leaned and I would chase her to the bottom and then she'd turn around and chase me and we'd do it for hours. I mean, I was like 12, no, I wasn't. I was 18. <laughs> it was last week. <laughs> no, was about um, four, I think. But yeah, how she was. How did she become yours? Um, my granddad bought us nine hens and a duck, but I wouldn't recommend that combination because hens are really vicious and evil, although we are thinking about getting them at the moment. Um, and also he forgot to clip them so one day where we lived was all conifer trees and they were all just in the trees they'd flown into oh. them <laughs> so oh, you know, to fly that high to clip them i mean not like ridiculously high but he had to get the ladder out to kind of encourage them down um but yeah rapunzel was instantly like my favorite and then they, my family would all say that they would know that because they'd be like well which chickens that i'd be like <laughs> <laughs> that's just a chicken where's my duck I where's Rapunzel and I think <laughs> one of the clues that my mum had that I might be gay <laughs> what do you want to call your pet duck Simon Rapunzel <laughs> Rapunzel I had fish and uh, up and down because it's really? down and down and that. yeah I call it up and down Inspire, inspiring well, it was, at least it's not like fishy and I don't know. Well, that is what happened. So we got two fish and my brother had one and I had one. And I was like, I'm I'm going to call mine up and down. And he didn't know what to call his. So I was like, I think you should call yours fishy dishy. Like obviously I just like got involved and told him what to call his own fish. So we had fishy dishy and up and down. <laughs> I laugh because it's the same with um, with Chris and mum and dad. They've got um, Tweety 3, I think. It is <laughs> all of their kind of treaty, and they also have um, it is amazing. They've got um, a tortoise called Torty, um, and she's 120. <gasps> wow, she's only got three legs. The thing you see, eh? Boy, she can move, and you'll see sometimes <laughs> they'll be sat in their lounge because they've got like an open lounge diner, and you'll just suddenly spot that the dining room chairs are moving, and it's because she's taking them on, and she's like, Come on, and she just tries to take them across the room with her. She's a legend. Wow, that's a tough old, tough old uh, reptile. Not very cuddly, though. Not very cuddly. Yeah, no. I found that with um, with Jen's tortoise Penny. Like she literally would just be like, ah, like, like you think, oh, she's over there, and then suddenly she's literally like biting your no, foot. Like, it's like, what? Shoes. She's a shoe biter. Mm. <laughs> a shoe humper as well. Oh, I've not witnessed that. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> same effect as you. Shoes are other tortoises. And she's like. Hey. It's gonna get busy. It's not very. It's not very fun. <laughs> I think that's the effect you've had on her because I did not. Uh, yeah, to be fair, my shoes are very sexy. Well, what will you say? Uh, I really want. Uh, that, I feel really sad that I've only ever had fish. It's a bit rubbish. Not very photogenic. It's hard though. In London. I think it is hard to have pets in London. We weren't. We didn't live in London when we had fish. My mum just didn't want animals. <laughs> I meant like now. <laughs> oh, now, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, we, we, we'd be hard. And since we've been at home, I've been like, oh, my God, Will, we should get a cat. But, like, obviously, we're not going to be at home forever, so it's really not a good idea to, in, you know, like, a one-bedroom flat. No. Unfair. If you've got a also, new... My mum's allergic to cats, so... Oh, yeah, that's not good. That's not good. But no. It's a bit of a statement, isn't it? Being like, <laughs> can't come around my house anymore. But I have seen quite a few people who've got puppies recently. 
And I'm like, one, where did you get them? And how did you do that safely? And oh, two, you like in the recent few yeah. weeks? Yeah, like literally in the last few days. Wow. Yeah, I know. It's quite odd. Um, but also I think if you got a cat now, it would it would be so used to you being there all the time but then not be. And they are independent and hate you 80% of the time. But I think it would be difficult. And, and if you've got one that's older, it would probably be like ours, which is just like, can you just bog off? We just want a bit of space. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't because we, we might get chickens because there's a chicken um, farm down the road. Um, and we think we can do it. Say well, Chris can do it safely. I can't leave the blinking out. But um, yeah, we, but still, I'm a little bit. We have foxes that nest in our garden, so I'm not sure that's a good recipe. Well, if you don't clip them, then they can fly away from the fox. <laughs> you can live on your roof. That's true. One of the cats has been up there, so why not? Why not, exactly. why not have, have a whole family up there? Or <laughs> indoors. You can get them in a little cage or something. Like yeah. Away from the fox. I don't know what you have to do. They stink though. Um, I have warned Chris that they are quite smelly chickens. Oh really? You need well, time to get luck. Yeah, we haven't got the water that they need. You need like uh, a decent pond. Mm. People have tuned into the books and look what they got. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> <Ducks> and fish. <laughs> and Amelia was saying, reading, read with me vlogs and my favourite things to watch. Something so comforting about someone sitting reading. Yeah, Jen's done one. Oh and yeah. I am denied about doing one for Cozy Reading Night, and then I thought, that's going to feel like I'm stealing Lauren's limelight. <laughs> it's Lauren's Cozy Reading Night, but come to my channel and watch me read. But, but watch me read <laughs> live. So, if you want to next do a book hibernation, I might do one then, where people can just, or I might just live stream for 10, well, three days. <laughs> I would love that. No. <laughs> Imagine though, imagine. I don't know. Oh, it's 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 you, you find it. I love watching them, but and it's like anything. I love certain content, but then when I do it, I think, oh god, who gives the monkeys about that? Mm. It's weird. It is weird. It's because things are normal. Like you know things yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Was that a sentence? But like, <laughs> you find your own life just whatever, don't you? Because that's just what you're doing. Like, I I bit... Am I trying to make my life sound interesting by <laughs> pouring a cup of tea differently than I might normally? I could bring more interesting things than you normally would. Yeah. <laughs> Chris, Chris, let's go, go to a castle like we do every weekend. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, um, uh, yeah, because like I did a, I filmed a bookshelf tour the other day and I've never done one before because I'm always like, no one wants to know what's on my bookshelf. But literally, I love watching bookshelf tours. But because I know all my books, I'm like, this is boring for anyone else. But I've done one now. So you're stuck with it. Well, I've <laughs> that one. I've not managed to do one yet. I think... You've got a, it would be days. Also, now we're in the room, so it's just got stupid. Because we're turning this downstairs sitting room into like a study where I put all the books that I have read. Um. And I think, yeah, because I tried to do, when we moved house, I tried to do a series of um, videos where I was unboxing all the books that I packed and talking about, like, why I'd got them. And I kept thinking, I don't know why I've got some of these. I need to get rid. But um, but then the burglars nicked the final five because it was all on my laptop. So you'll never know what was in those final five boxes. It's going to be one of life's great mysteries, like the Bermuda Triangle and <laughs> the Jerk King. You could try again. Nah. <laughs> It got really boring for me. It's weird. It's like people loved them, but I actually found it by the end of it. I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. And do you find you get bored? Like sometimes you get bored with your own filming of yourself because I do. Well, that's what I was just about to say. Like mid, it could be like midway through a week. I'll be sort of because I try to edit vlogs as I go now, and I'll just be like, Oh, Simon, you just talk shit. <laughs> <laughs> or I'll just be like, No, I'm, yeah, I don't know what am I doing now? But whereas anybody else does that, they find it really interesting. So I think, and also I think there's that worry sometimes when you're doing it, that I start to worry, God, do people think I think I'm really interesting? And then I think you're thinking about it too much. Yeah. Or am I? Because people do think you're interesting. <laughs> I think I'm interesting. Oh, am I? <laughs> I can't get hot. <laughs> oh, dear. Shall we so, see if we've got, because we, we've been going for an hour now. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and you are not interesting, Simon, as we have just, Shut up. We just confirmed. <laughs> We're in some degrees. Can make yourself exciting today. <laughs> Shall we do a couple more um a couple more questions? 
Uh, hmm. The thing is, I'm choosing these based on whether I think I've got good answers for them. <laughs> okay. What about um, re um, Evangelies asked for recommendations for short books slash novellas. Oh. Do you read uh, a lot of those? I read a lot more short story collections than I do short books, I think. I've definitely got more short story collections than I've got short books. And also, I love short story collections, but I don't read them enough. I, I, I would like to read a lot more. I feel like I go through phases of reading them. I think the only one I'm going to reach for, because it's right here, is this. I'd recommend that. Excellent novella. Yeah. Um, also, I guess Lanny by Max Porter. It's very yeah. short. No. Is that a novella, maybe? Karis um, um, Davis, she's got two short story collections, a novella that's out now, West, and one that's coming, The Mission House this autumn. I think she's one of the best short story and novella writers ever. Mm. She's one of my absolute faves. I don't I think I've ever read any Karis Davis. It's a very um, good recommendation. Olivia Lang, who I mentioned her non-fiction, she mm -hmm. wrote called Crudo, um, which was set in the summer of 2017. And it's a novella, but she writes about everything that actually happened as it's happening. And you read it and you're like, how can that have been real? Because it sounds like such far-fetched fiction. Because it's when Trump got in, it's when Brexit all started. Like, oh my God. All time. So it's almost a bit like the, the season quartet, but like really condensed. But yeah, just that one year. Yeah. And really it's, specific, I guess, as well, because the Ali Smith stuff is a bit more implied yeah. Yeah. rather than specific. Yeah, but no, I, I definitely recommend that. I'm trying to think of any other short ones. I, I, did, um, I've got, I was really handy being at my desk because I've got all my books like right here. I have all the books around me. Uh, but they're far away from you. Mine are like within, within reach. I read this Ooh. the other day. It's is very good? good. It's very good, yeah. It's um, just lots of short stories all about um different black people basically in in america but it's uh it's really like all of the characters are just so so specific and so distinct yeah there'd be like one young girl who is like an asmr artist on youtube and like she's like like all their problems or their lives are like so so specific um and distinct and i really liked it it's very Ooh, good. That's really good i've been reading um I've been reading. Uh, me and Lena have done sort of like an unofficial buddy read where we're reading Naomi Ishiguro's collection. Oh, um, what do you think of that? Well, <laughs> it's only 10 stories long and we've been buddy reading it since March the 25th. So, <laughs> but it I just didn't like it. Well, I love some of the ideas in it. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know how I feel about how they're executed necessarily. And also I felt like I was trying to judge her on her dad which wasn't probably very fair. No. Um, but now I, d I don't know, because I, I I think I like, I really like, in fact, actually a short book that I've read recently that I really loved because it was so, I quite like, if it's if it's short, I want it to be a bit quirky. Mm -hmm. a, weird, a weird thing that I've got about that. Like even like Sarah Moshi might not say it's particularly quirky, but it's a, it's a, it's a really unusual ghost wall, I think. Mm -hmm. what it does. Um, and I like a really good short book for when I need a real short shot shock of fiction almost like like a real hit um, yeah. and then i find oh mothering sunday that's a good one by graham swift that's another really good one but yeah i think there are certain authors who do it really well and i have to this is going to sound like a huge grand sweeping statement i think a lot of asian short fiction can be the quirky most unusual fun mm -hmm. fiction to head to actually if you're looking for something short and sharp and sweet i think that's a very good idea yeah that's 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 a very good tip because i think what you want in a short stories for everything to be like really distilled like just down to the the bones of it because otherwise what's the point in it being short you still want to have like the same kind of message but just within that short frame yeah. and i think short, i think short stories short authors i think short authors are probably quite difficult to write now <laughs> i think short stories and short novellas are actually probably harder than because there are some books although it's weird isn't it though there are some books that go on forever and you're just like, get to it. And then I've noticed as I read more, occasionally I'll find books where I'm like, you should have been longer. Yeah, yeah. Did, no. well, we've got a couple of recommendations for Red at the Bone here as well, which oh, I've, I haven't read that yet. And I that's like very excited for that. That's down here as well, yeah. below my desk. <laughs> and Deborah Levy, people are recommending as well. And I'd agree with Deborah Levy. Again, mm -hmm. quirky, quite weird, but go with it. Yeah. I think she is, she's decent. Are you excited about the Mum Booker this year? 
Don't believe you just made me think of that. Yeah. <laughs> when does it get? I don't know. Because it should I... be announced now, shouldn't it? I think it's going to be in the next few okay. weeks. They put the international back, the announcement date. Yeah. They didn't need to shift the booker. Um, it might be this month. But I can't decide because I think of the whole hoo ha last year and I was going to cross it. Like the thing with the booker is I just feel like I don't care. <laughs> Because it's normally so, I don't know, you do get some really good ones that are long listed for the booker and that's great, but I don't feel like the booker as a list on itself is an indication that I personally am going to like something. So I think it's great that it exists and it's especially like, like I really enjoyed Milkman um, and I probably wouldn't have picked that up if that hadn't won. But equally, it wasn't like the best book I personally think I've ever read. No, I, think so, I don't know. I, I, I just, I'm never that excited about the book. I'm like interested, but it, I never, I don't normally read all the shortlists or anything. No, I used to, but I've just really, really, I just lost. I don't know. I will obviously like because I did the BBC thing. I obviously read the shortlist, mm. and that was really good fun. And I did it because it was something different, but like that year again I felt and that was when Milkman won which I enjoyed on audio like it was it was good but it wasn't like my favorite book of the year not that necessarily the book needs to be my favorite book of the year, if you know what I mean but I feel like we've missed a bit of a there was a golden period like about five six seven eight years ago and then I don't know what's happened to it and then last year for me was such a missed opportunity mm. I, st I still weirdly can't let the jewel wing go I know, I, I, just, I feel like it's and also even though it's different judges every year it's like I still <laughs> I'm annoyed at them, even though it's not going to be the same people this well, year. I'm annoyed at the prize because of what the judges have done the last few years. Yeah. Like, that's not fair. But um, but what was amazing was when I watched it back, because I was at the dinner, you didn't get the <gasps> as loudly as you did when you were in there. Like when he started, right, yeah. like literally every table just went <gasps> so loudly. But then I just felt, and I'm still, and I actually really enjoyed the Women's Prize did a live the other day and their chair of judges, I loved it because she was like, it was robbed last year. Let's be frank. It should have been one winner. The end. <laughs> Good for you. Because that's what yeah, well, exactly. Like uh, that's the other thing I don't like about it. Because I think you get this a lot in general in like the publishing industry and prizes and stuff. People don't want to say what they really think. <laughs> um, like you know, I I just think that's not how it should have worked. No. And but, more people should have come out and said this is stupid. Well, look, what was I mean, interesting? Like, well, they're both amazing books. Yeah. Yeah. And, and job. even Margaret Atwood was a bit amused by it all, I felt. <laughs> she was a bit like... It either. Like, oh. I don't know. But I do find it interesting because I think, like, I... When they asked me... When the BBC asked me to do, to do the show, Booker weren't sure about it at all. It was really interesting because they were like, well, you know, he, he, he says what he thinks. <laughs> it was like, yeah, that's the whole yeah. like, I'm never going to be rude, but people who, who've watched me a while will know when I like something a lot and when I like it a little bit. There'll be inferences in what I say. Like, I would never turn around and go, this book was awful and I hated it. Because I also am aware that people have taken a long time to write it. But I will say, I didn't like this because... Um, that's, that's the trouble with, with books, though, in general, like and reviewing books, is because it is so subjective, really. And it, it's quite hard, like, if you wanted to be a presenter or interviewing people or something... It either has to be something that you already love or you just have to not bring your own yeah. opinion to it because someone else might really love that book, even if you don't. Yeah. But, but you still want to be honest about what your opinion was because that's what you do. You re review books. Yeah. So, and it's like... Yeah, makes it difficult. I won't do events if I don't like the book. There's no way I'm sitting and interviewing somebody if I don't genuinely like yeah. the book because it would just be a farce. Um, and I think there's one time I did it and then the book halfway through I thought I was going to love and then really really didn't I was like I'm never doing that again I'm never doing an event where I don't have yeah but well, it's, it's difficult isn't it because you can't be genuine and that's yeah. what you want to do and at the same I, point, I quite like them um, when we did the when we did the stuff for Mambuka whenever that was like five years ago that was I quite liked it because I enjoyed I always enjoy when I've read all of a shortlist or all of a long list because then I feel like I can really understand the decisions or I can bet like me and Jean put a bet on um uh the winner <laughs> in Africa so we were like yes I won 50 pounds <laughs> <laughs> um, but, 
that's because we read all of them so that's we could we thought we, it's going to be this one we just knew yeah. um but also i think i used to really follow the book and enjoy the book because i felt like that's what i should like and it was sort of pre getting into more booktube like just reading for myself and talking amongst my friends like before i had a wider circle of people reading a lot you, you use that as an indication of what's good literature and what's coming what's coming out and yeah. that's where you get your recommendations from and I think I used to put a lot more stock into it and now I feel like I don't know perhaps the veil has been lifted on the booker for me a little bit I'm a bit like oh it's all, you know <laughs> they right. don't know any more than I do like I just it's not like wow these amazing people who know everything about literature this is the best book ever and now I'm just like oh well sometimes you're flat though because look what you just did last year <laughs> I like the book for the dinner. I'm not gonna like <laughs> with food. Didn't we didn't get dinner. We were we were in the crypt downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> we were invited to the dinner. We had to sit. <laughs> we had to sit in this like crypt of the Guild Hall or whatever it is, with all the other people that work there. Just in general, so like I don't know, security guards or like publishers or like anyone who wasn't invited to the dinner. We just had this like curry that we had to spoon ourselves on the like, <laughs> Our plates. <laughs> well, the dinner was happening above us. I do think the thing with prizes, I was thinking about this the other day, is I, I think because when you, even if you're not in the industry, but you know more about what's out there and what's available, and also you're, you know where to go and discover more fiction that isn't mm. based, then prizes start to become slightly less significant in a yeah. way. Other than if you really love one, like with me, with the women's prize, and you know, me and my mum have been doing that together, and we, I really love that now. That's like a, a new, probably yearly thing that we'll do. But, um, and that's also because it's something that me and my mum are doing. So there's that double excitement of yeah. it. Now with the booker, I think actually when I was getting back into books, because I didn't read between the ages of like 17 and 22 at all, that that was kind of where I was like, okay, well they must be books that are worthy of me giving a go because they won a prize. Mm -hmm. And I would discover certain authors and that would be like a journey. But I think, um, I think it's now I feel like they're great markers for anyone who's sort of getting into books or sort of wanting to try a few different things but the more I read apart from now when I do judge prizes which is different um I feel like I veer away from the books that everyone's talking about a bit more yeah it's uh, not in a kind of no, I, know, exactly. alone and I, I have different different tastes from everyone else I don't mean it like that but it's just if a book gets too hyped or too much mentioned I'm like okay that book's had its time I'll get to that another time. I want to go and Yeah, you don't need to read it like at the point where it's already hyped. But like yeah. you say, because you've got different methods of finding out about books now. And that's what I think prizes are brilliant for, like highlighting fiction to people that otherwise wouldn't know about it and getting them in, on the tables in bookshops and on the shelves and everything so everyone can see them. Um, but I don't know, part of the, the thing I feel about with something like Booker specifically is that I think if I... If, if when I was younger, like 18, had tried to read some of those books and thought, oh, well, I should like this because it's the booker, yeah, yeah. that was, would have put me off if it had been ones I didn't like. Whereas now I think I'm more confident and I've read more widely now. So I know what I like and what I don't like. And I'm, I find it easier to go, oh, that's a very good book. It's just not one I like, but I can still see, completely see its merits or yeah. whatever. And I'm, I'm also not afraid to put books down now. Whereas before, I used to, if I wasn't liking it, I obviously would just like stop. No, I've got. I, I, I keep reading it, and now I just, I just stop. <laughs> I don't enjoy them. DNF happy, but also I think what's in, like what I find because I like I've only been on YouTube now what nearly four years, whereas I know like lots of you like I watched a lot of you beforehand, and actually mm -hmm. now thinking about it, watching YouTubers, well, sorry, booktubers talking about books is a would probably be. And I'm not saying this because I am one. It's just genuinely how I felt was much more of a way into books now. I think. Because yeah. you learn what the person likes, they put their own inference into it, they sort of contextualise it within their lives and their, you know, preferences, etc. There's just something more open about it. Um, and you get to know what their tastes are, so then you understand, like, if if you're going to like it. Cause you, and also people explain why they do and don't like things, and it's just, sometimes even if someone didn't like a book, you can go, oh, I think that's, I think I will like that, though. I think it sounds good to me. Um, and you've got different booktubers as well and people will disagree and you get like more of a spectrum rather than just someone going this book is good yeah therefore you disagree so, I think what I like about about booktube in general is because I think it is such a nice community 
but also there's this real thing where if people don't like a book, they'll say they don't like it, but they won't expect anyone who's watching them to not therefore read it. It's not like I go, well, I didn't like this book, so if you like this channel, don't you dare read that book. How dare you have your opinion? I'm like, I didn't like it, but you might because of X, Y, and Z, which I didn't. Yeah. Um, Because I do find it funny, like when I've stopped talking about what I've just started reading on social media and stuff, because I was getting so many people like egging, like gagging in, gagging in so quickly, like I hated that, oh, this thing happens. And I was like, guys, come on. That was what my gran used to do, God love it. (laughs) I remember starting The Blind Assassin, she told me the ending about five minutes later, and I was like, it's a 560 page book, Dorothy. Um, but I think it's because I don't know people are, generally it's because people just want to interact and that's lovely but I find it I don't know I suppose it's it's weird because I put my opinion out there but I like to think I do it after the fact well yeah I don't know. Well, you never know though because someone could be reading a book that you're about to review and then you're like well I hated this book when they're in the middle of reading it you know, and then you're still yeah. sort of spoiling it for them in a way aren't you I guess it's I think I'd contextualise it, though, and say, I didn't like it because this is this. And also, I try not to spoil any books when I talk about them. But yeah. it's, like, it's not like I've just gone on a statement, oh, you've started that, I hated it. Well, where am I meant to go with that? Like, come no, on. <laughs> I've read it and I go, I loved it or I hated it. That's fine. But I, I don't know. That's, I, I just find it a weird, a weird thing. But then, you know, I, Chris says that I slightly deserve it because I put myself out there. I think it's hard because when you do a video, people can choose to watch your video. But if someone just tweets you, yeah, that's like unsolicited, I guess, isn't it? Yeah, and also and but a bit often I I ask people what they think of books before I've read them. So yeah, you know, I'm interested to hear people's opinions because I've got too many books to read. If someone says they don't like it, I'd be like, oh, brilliant! I won't read that then. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Even me a few hours. <laughs> I know that the other I'm like. I'm excited about these books. Don't tell me you hated them, which I think is fine because, like, once I've read them, and if you hated it and I loved it, let's have that conversation. I find that fascinating. I don't think we should all agree on books, but I don't know. I just find that initial like there's something slightly. I don't know. I just find it quite odd. But and it is. It's like you said. It's it's that atting you. So therefore, you have no. You, you can't not read it because you could think yeah. it's. Um, but also, I, I think that's just general amazing. social media etiquette, though. I don't think that's necessarily because of it, but just in general. Sometimes people at people at things, and you think like that, <laughs> that person didn't need to know that. <laughs> so that's just yeah. like imagine cool. if you didn't like a book and you added the author on Twitter going, I hate this book. Like, wh- people do do that, but you shouldn't. <laughs> I've said that I loved a book and added the author in it because I would never add the author if I didn't like it. Yeah. And then they respond to me and the author, well, I thought that was dreadful. <laughs> Well, have a lovely Sunday. <laughs> oh, thanks so much. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I, don't I, mean, I suppose it's like you know, opinions are like arseholes. Everyone's got one. <laughs> That's what I keep trying to tell myself. <laughs> Such a lovely way. And all just... those arseholes have their YouTube channels. <laughs> don't know what you're going to say. That's the problem. <laughs> oh gosh. But no, I do love, I love the fact that people are still joining BookTube and stuff. I think that's really nice. I think it's nice that it hasn't, it, it, I just don't, it's really interesting. I was really nervous before I started doing it. And I remember I spoke to Jen about this. Um, and I was just a bit like, I don't think people will, will like me or like, I don't feel like I'll be part of the community. And you just are quite quickly. I think it's a really, I, I would hope. Like, yeah, but because it's about a book, you know, p- lots of people have opinions on books. <laughs> Well, the stuff that's coming out of my mouth today, absolutely changing your life. <laughs> um, but it's an easy way for you to understand about someone's personality and what they like and don't like. If you have both read the same book and you can have a conversation about it, I think you get to know that side of someone quite quickly, um, which is really good. And also, you need no one is going to have the exact same reading taste as you, which is why you, most people watch like a little group of booktubers and you get like different recommendations from different people. And there's all these like different communities of booktube that kind of pop up as well. Um, so I think it's like there's room for so many people to do it, I think, which is what's brilliant. Well, I think that's what's nice is it's like when you when you get a certain group of booktubers that you follow, it almost becomes like because I still can't believe I've been doing it for years. I feel like I've been doing it a lot less. Um, but I feel like when I was when I was 
a viewer before I started Booktube. It was like I found a book club that I'd created. Yeah. Not necessarily those people all knew each other or necessarily like mates or whatever, but there was this sort of book club and it was really nice because there would be people within that group who would have completely polar opinions on a book, but it didn't matter because actually it was, that made it more interesting for me. Yeah. I think it is because it wasn't that, well, I hated it at the end. It's like, well, this is what I didn't like, whereas somebody would be like, oh, but this bit I loved about. I don't know that I really, really, I just think it's, yeah. And I also think things like YouTube and BookTube and like now, for people to be able to have that resource when they're stuck at home, I just think is a really, really nice thing. Although I was aware when I got, when it all started, I was a bit like, I will do a video every day. <laughs> and then after a week and a half, I was like, oh God, and Chris no. is what are you doing? Yeah, it's too much. I've got loads of time on my hands, which makes me want to do more videos, but also you've got, to, you can't saturate people. Like it's, it's also too much, but it's, for you, it's just, you, you know, like I did a video yesterday. I did a video today as well. And it's like, but that's actually too much. People can't watch that much to one person because it just people don't have time. My watch later list is so long, like myself. So yeah, okay. you can't you you can't just like <laughs> push too much content on people, but it's very very <laughs> tempting. But it's and it's why like I've never like I did um Vlogmas. I can't believe I'm talking about Christmas already, but Christmas is <laughs> Is now I don't love Christmas that much, but I'm seeing it as a time of hope. <laughs> a lot better a situation by, by then. Um, but um, yeah, I I tried it and I just found it so one exhausting because I think it is you use quite a lot of energy when you're filming. Like not not like I'm saying I did a marathon in that. Stuff. <laughs> no, it is. So you're very on the whole time, like your brain, and it's yeah. it does take up does take a lot of energy. Because even though I'm just being myself. There is bits of you that you're raining, like I, I will rein in. I know that a swear word's gonna come. So I'll just sort of bite it back <laughs> and stuff like that. I <laughs> but I don't know, it does, it's quite um but at the same time, I just it's it's like therapy in a weird way because you know, Chris isn't that interested in books. Um a lot of my mates aren't, so it's a space where I can kind of get that. And that's why I started my blog like what, 14 years ago, was because mm. I just wanted that outlet. And then now look what's happened. Since it's like, you know, your own thoughts as well, I think. Like when you're reviewing it, when, when you have to explain a book to someone, it makes you really think about why you did and didn't like a book. It's just made me, like, I think it's really affected my reading and made me more analytical in the way I read, which I really enjoy as well. I totally, totally, totally agree. And But I do you find sometimes, like, you'll have this really good thought about a book and I don't make any notes. So I like to just... And <laughs> And I'll finish a video and I'll record and I'll go, oh, God, I didn't mention that thing that I really thought was quite profound of me to think. <laughs> I will, as I will read, I'll, I'll, I'll think of, like, adjectives in my brain, like how I would describe it. And I'm like, oh, yeah, it's very, like, I don't know. And then I completely forget them. I don't say any of it when I actually do the, actually do the video. <laughs> no, I know, I used to make notes. Well, I used to make notes before every video and now I just freestyle. No, I don't make any. The only ones I do is if I've got, like, my chatty ones, I just try and rein in what certain things yeah. I want to talk about. Yeah, I do that as well. Because if it's a book thing, I've got the prop, so I know that I've got to talk about the next, whereas if it's just, like, willy-nilly, whatever Simon wants to say, I'm like, that could get dangerous, so at least I've got bullet points. But the one that bothers me is I think, oh, I must remember to say that when I talk about this book. And it's something that I think that's either something that people will resonate with or might find funny or whatever. And then I'll be like three books later and think, oh, you bugger. <laughs> I can feel myself doing it. Like, I want to rewind and I can't. <laughs> oh, you like, oh, I've, got, I've, I've gone too far. Yeah. I, I, I lost a bit of gold there. It might have only been that that big. <laughs> but but then I, you do yours in like one go a lot. Yeah, I try. If I do that, I stop and I do the whole thing again. <gasps> no. Are you insane? Face. If I feel like, oh, I said that in not quite the right way, I'll start the sentence again. Okay, but you won't, you won't do. I thought you meant you do like I'm a. Sentence. I'll start and go right, and I can tell like from editing, I see how many times I pick up the book. Because every time I pick up the book, I'm like, oh, that's good. That's the beginning. I've started again. <laughs> so I can be like, right, okay, blah blah blah, and then oh. like, yeah, I start it again a lot. I do that occasionally. Um. Like if I know I've just said something that either could be really misconstrued, that's my biggest one. Like I yeah, I know me too. Sometimes I say something, I'm like, oh God, I don't know where I was going with that. That's getting a bit strange. <laughs> like, that's something that you understand 
means one thing, yeah. but you know that other people might hear it a different way. Um, but I, I thought you meant like, I think, I don't think she does it as much now, but Mercedes used to literally start filming. She could get three or four books in. If it went wrong, she'd just delete the whole lot. I think that's true. I have Why did you start completely yeah. again? Yeah, I think so. Wow. I don't think she does that so much anymore. Um, but there are also, I think it's really weird where you have days when you just know you shouldn't film. Like, yeah. it's a bad idea. You've got, like, I'm, I'm aware, but also when I do this thing where I, I was about to say the words, I'm aware that my wrap up for April part two is late. Simon, get a grip. But <laughs> it's my thing about whole pick. <laughs> <laughs> A word with yourself every so often, don't you? Because you, you like, I think everyone does it where they're like, oh, I haven't done something and I really, really should have. Um, uh, but it's just, I don't know. And then you, I just have a word with myself where I was like, You're gonna force it, what's the point? Like, yeah, yeah, real. you know, like this week I should have done it, but broke my toe, we're decorating, I had my probation, busy week. <laughs> it doesn't matter I think that's the thing when you have your own channel when you've got like a, you know what you're supposed to do or you're really aware of when you last uploaded you're like oh god I've got to get something up because otherwise I won't have anything for this week and you're just like oh it doesn't, it doesn't matter <laughs> not at all I don't know why I'm stressed about it I don't mean that no one cares as in like people avidly don't care but I think people understand that you have other stuff going on I think they don't care in that like you know, nobody's paying for this. <laughs> We're not getting paid to do it. And it's like, I don't know, it's just like hobby stuff, isn't it? So it doesn't, okay. I just find it amazing that people watch. I still I still find that quite, I, the one thing I've got to get better at though is commenting. I am so, so bad at, I'm so bad. I'm bad at commenting on other people's videos at the moment. And I'm also really bad at commenting back on mine. I just think it's, yeah. like, I've got to tell myself off because actually it's just rude. Um, I think it's not. It's like when you just forget to reply to a text or something there, because you're like, mm, "That's very interesting," but then forget you've not told the person that. Yeah. I think. You reply in your head. And I'm like, "Oh yeah, I love your comment. Thank you." <laughs> and then get on with my day, like, rather than like replying to it. Yeah, I, and that's the same. Yeah, yeah. It is, it's like text and stuff. But but overall, I just think it. Like, if anybody said, "Should I do it?" My thoughts would totally just be yes, because one, what have you got to lose? Two, you'll find a whole community of people that are really welcoming and lovely. And, you know, I've made some mates on here that, like, I just think, you know, I, I was thinking about it actually the other day, like at the wedding, there were loads of you there. And I just thought, but you'd only become friends in a certain time. But I think because you see each other, I don't know. I think, obviously, that's assuming that everybody is like they are on their channel in real life. But you can kind of get to know who you will and will get. people are, though, I think. Yeah. On YouTube, most people are. When I've met YouTubers, they're not always like they are on their channels. But most booktubers, I think, are. You've not had the pleasure of meeting any YouTubers that aren't booktubers. I hope you never do. Oh! <laughs> that, that, I'm not it, that bombshell. <laughs> no, on Simon. Close your channel down, bugger off. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. This has been lovely. Thank you. Thanks for coming on. I really enjoyed doing this. Like, on the regular, are you going to do social Sundays every so often? With oh, other... every couple of weeks, maybe. Oh, at least at the moment, I think. Because obviously everybody, you know, it's, it's quite good to have a nice have a nice live chat, I think. Um, I might do another one in in two Sundays' time. Yeah. I think... I think it's really nice. Like either just with me or with other people or whatever. Keep it loosey-goosey. But I am... Um, I think it's quite fun to do a live thing. And also, um, <laughs> I think it's not a quiz. Because <laughs> I feel like everything is a quiz. <laughs> <laughs> there is a point, like, I've, I've got people who are doing, like, weekly quizzes. And I, at first I was joining in, and by now I'm like... <sighs> and then also, people were doing them at the same time as Race around the race Across the World. And I was like, guys, I'm not missing that. I'm sorry. I love you. I think like, this is very important. I love that show. You find actually, I feel like everyone assumes you don't have any plans. So I'm yeah. like, oh, so shall we do it at this time? And I'm like, oh, <laughs> I've got something else done. <laughs> yeah, like, Simon, how's your diary looking for the next few weeks? I'm like, uh, Lauren, it's pretty much dead. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I feel like virtual things, I feel like people just think, oh, it's fine, we can just do this tomorrow. Yeah. Or something. Whereas normally, if you met up with someone, you'd be like, oh, maybe in a week's time or something. You know, so you need to be. When are we doing our next Zoom? Let's do it tomorrow. I'm like, no, nah, sorry, I'm doing a live at that time. I can't do it. Sorry. <laughs> Oops. Uh, well, thanks everybody for joining. Yes. Sorry, we have absolutely nested on. I think we have, we have, I've, I've been reading the comments as they've come through, but I don't feel like we've, uh, 
and we've responded to a lot of them, but I'm sorry. My mum will do her own channel. She won't, sadly. That's 100% definite. But she has joined Instagram now, so there we go. She's becoming oh, an influencer. <laughs> but no, she she doesn't want to do a channel yet. She depends how often you get her on yours. Yeah. Well, well it's weird, because normally we would have done... Because when we see each other now, she wants to do one, which I find quite funny. Because um, I'm like, she'll go out. And she's like, yeah, but when are we going to film? Oh. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> I think we had a relationship that went a lot beyond filming, but okay. Exactly. Yeah, that's all she wants before. Free books from the Women's Prize and a bit of a chat every so often. Um, okay. no, she, I, I think she's enjoying that level of it. Or, and, you know, she doesn't have to edit it and stuff, so... Easy. Oh, fair enough. There's a lot... The editing is a big part of it. Just coming on someone's channel and then leaving again is, like, the easiest thing ever. <laughs> that's, like, that's why I'm enjoying lives, because I don't have to edit any of this. <laughs> This is it. Normally, you see, Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. I can't. I can't speak in one big long go. That's the problem. But you can, like now. I can't. Not when I'm actually trying to explain a book. I like trip over my words, or I like make a mistake, or. <laughs> I enjoy. It. You're very. You're very um courageous and brave. <laughs> I just cannot be. I should deserve some kind of honour. Okay, a medal. Well. <laughs> and by the way, if anyone thinks I'm being serious, I'm 100% joking. <laughs> yeah, there is that word, though, isn't there? Sometimes you'll say something that's like meant in your own. I know, sometimes people just, I uh, know. And you'll think, oh. I think you can just overthink it. I think it doesn't matter. It doesn't. Oh, oh well, thanks for, thanks for joining everybody. Thank yeah, you for you coming. Thank you. Um, thank you. Lovely to see you. Mm hmm. Sorry, we didn't answer every question. We, have, we I mean, we have been talking for an hour and a half. So that's quite a long time. Yeah. But, you know. like, oh, that's enough. Oh, Everyone's like, just please be quiet now. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's really, really fun. Thank you for having me. And also, now I know how to do this. So maybe actually I can do a live with my mum. I might yes. do a birthday on YouTube, which I think is two weeks' time, I think. Yeah, you should. That'd be really good. Booktube birthday party. Oh. I oh, was. That was fun. Cake. It was lovely. We had little, little, little fairy cakes, didn't we? Yeah. Did Chris make cake? Probably. <laughs> Probably. Probably. Oh, yeah, that was cute. It was. It was lovely. Yeah, I can't believe it's been nearly four years. How long has yours been now? Five years? It, it, this is the fifth year, I think. I think it will be five years next January or something. It was like 2015, I think I started. Gosh. I know. Who knew Can't what... Start? when you started filming or well, both were started filming but um, it's brought so much to my life like I, i'm gonna start talking again so i'll wrap up but... <laughs> <laughs> I'm for my phone to start blowing up there'll be messages like from lauren in box saying just shut up now simon Literally, <laughs> away. like people seriously a note to end it on is if you think you want to do a youtube channel just do it you've got nothing to lose What's yeah. the worst that can happen? i think that's a really nice message to end on <laughs> oh, okay. Thanks for your opportunity again. I'll speak to you soon. Bye. And you're allowed to say bye. <laughs> bye, everyone. Bye.